Welcome back. Uh, so now we enter what is considered one of the more productive times in terms of artistic expression and indeed all forms of expression. We haven't quite hit the golden era of theatrical endeavors, but the seeds are starting to be planted and we're starting to see society and artistic endeavors kind of break out of the shell that they have been confined in during the Middle Ages. So what we are about to hit is what we call the Renaissance. Now there were several Renaissances going on in and around this time. We had the English Renaissance, but the one that we are going to be focusing on is the Italian Renaissance, because this seems to be where so much expansion was taking place. So a Renaissance, for those who don't know, is literally a resurgence, a rediscovery, a rebirth. When an, an actor or a singer or any artist or anybody goes away for a real long time and they're dormant and then suddenly they come back with some big hit and then boom, they're on top again, we call that having a career renaissance. So, you know, Robert Downey Jr. was kind of on his way out. He was on the downswing, and then out of nowhere, Iron Man, and he's back. So people call that his career renaissance. So what we see during this time period is the reemergence of certain forms of production. We see uh, new artists taking over. This is the era of Leonardo da Vinci. This is the era of Michelangelo. This is the era of all the Ninja Turtles. Bad joke, sorry, but you know I can't resist something like that. Anyway, but seriously, folks, we see mankind begin to ask those questions. Why do things happen? Why is this the way it is? How does the world actually physically work as opposed to just you know, it just does. So we see the emergence of great thinkers. We see the emergence of great artists. So art is starting to bring itself back. And in terms of theater, performance art is kind of breaking out of the shell that it had kind of been forced into during the Middle Ages. And again, we must stress, the Middle Ages, as stifling as they kind of were towards performance art, you can kind of understand where they were coming from. They were doing their best to put society back together after the fall of Rome, and they were using the most powerful uniting force that they could. So you can't really blame them. But the simple fact is theatrical productions had been stagnant and had been pushed down, repressed, whatever you want to call it. And during this time, we see the cracks in that and new seeds, new forms of performance starting to sprout up. We will not see any playwrights from this time. Just like the Romans and the Middle Ages before them, this was not the time for new plays to be written. The ones that were, were for private performances, usually uh, for the well-to-do. You know, you're having a party and you're bringing everybody over. You can't bring everybody over to watch the game or to watch the season premiere of Game of Thrones. So sometimes a rich person would commission a play to be written and to be performed basically for their private audience, which is another thing we kind of see during this time. We see that the merchant class is growing. So we are starting to see the development of a middle class. We're not quite there yet but we're on the way. But what we are seeing is that wealth is increasing. There is more leisure time than there had been at any time in history prior. Certainly nothing like what we are accustomed to now. But for the time, having any available time on your hands 
for recreational activities was, you know, that was mind blowing. So we see uh, the development of leisure time. We see the growth of some economics going on. And when people have excess money, as we all know, as you know, you can kind of see behind me here, when people have excess money, the first thing they're trying to think of is what am I going to spend it on? One of the things that became very, very fashionable was for folks with money to become supporters of the arts. It was almost akin to people nowadays buying sports teams, you know, companies buying sports teams and naming the stadium after themselves. It became very, very fashionable for folks with money to find an artist, a painter, a musician, a writer, and basically pay for their work because the higher up in esteem that person's work went, well, the higher up in esteem the person paying for it went. Just like nowadays, you'll see tycoons go, yeah, that's my sports team over there. Back then it was, yep, that's my painter. He did that and I paid for it. So that makes me pretty good. So we see funding for the arts starting to come back. Uh, as mentioned, we're not going to see a lot of playwrights during this time. But what we do see is the development of two very distinctive and very, very popular forms of theatrical entertainment pop up. One of them that we're going to discuss is still around today and is still a viable art form. It's one of the only forms of performance from this time period that is still around and in its original form. And it's changed very little through history. And the other form, which has not been as popular in recent years, but there are still schools dedicated to it, and it itself has kind of morphed into something new. And it would also help, and I use this term a lot, it would also help plant those seeds, plant more seeds for what was about to come. And that would be the Elizabethan era and the supposed golden age of theatrical productions. So the Italian Renaissance is a very exciting time. It's like going to a college with a bunch of young artists who are just discovering new ways to communicate, new ways to present their art, and just watching people paint or sculpt and just suddenly feel very uninhibited. The other thing that happens during this time, which is going to be very, very important, is that the printing press comes into existence. And because of that, that means the early plays that were still in existence, things like the work of Sophocles, the works of folks like Aristotle and Horace, they now become more available. More people are reading these ancient works and are starting to have discussions about them. So those are two things that are very, very important, and that's what we're going to be covering in these next couple of videos. We're going to talk about the two forms of performance that spring up during the Italian Renaissance, and we are going to talk about a school of theatrical thought that began here during the Renaissance, picking up kind of where Horace left off. So the Italian Renaissance is a very fun, very exciting time, and I am looking forward to sharing it with you.